Alrighty team, I haven't really had a moment since I've gotten to this farm um, to be able to to chat and kind of say what's going on. So yeah, I kind of just got thrown into everything, which has been just super, super interesting. Um, but I guess I'll share more of that shortly. I am here on a farm. I hitchhiked from Queenstown to Timaru and my last ride actually dropped me off right at the farm so it wasn't too difficult to get to luckily. Yeah, I grew up with animals so I'm used to it, however not to the, the same extent as how many they have here. So it's been full on but it's so cool. My first day I was invited to help brand some of the younger dairy cows, which was pretty intense, but um, my job was to use a metal pole to put into the cow's mouth so that it could chew on it and distract it from everything else going on basically. dead tired. <laughs> I haven't done this kind of manual labor in a long time and oh, I'm wrecked. <laughs> but um, apparently there's more um, more work to be done as there would be on a farm. So today we're going to be moving a herd from one paddock to the other is what I'm told. Um, and I'm excited. You usually see these kinds of things on the road um, when you're driving in New Zealand, but you never get to do it, so today's the day, I guess. <laughs> come back. Come back, come back, come back. We are currently moving some of the, the stock from one paddock to another. It's about it's a couple kilometers long anyway. And it's just, it's really interesting to see um, just all the movements of it and how much work just opening and closing gates honestly is. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's really quite fun. Rewarding. Here, I've been given a job so. They're coming. <laughs> so these guys are actually looking at becoming an organic milk farm, which is pretty cool. They were telling me about it yesterday and that um, there are a lot of little things that you have to do to become organic and they're basically already there except for hi babies these are the guys we moved yesterday um, but uh, yeah there's a lot of things you have to do they're basically organic um, except for a couple of antibiotics that they're still giving to some of the cows um, but they had a a deal with China um, to sell their milk to, but um, some of the grass that they grow, uh, actually the clovers, have nitrogen in the root system and when the cows digest it, it actually comes up as a preservative in the milk. And so even though it's a natural preservative, um, when they test it, it seems like they're maybe supplementing the cows in a weird way. So. They didn't get that deal, but um, they're now still working on it and uh, trying to get that certification, which is really cool to hear. Um, you know, we've just been chatting about it, and uh, back home, I would say it would probably go over pretty well. But in New Zealand, everything's already really expensive as it is, so no one's going to spend more on organic milk, especially. Um, when it, it just kind of feels like everything's right here and you can see what's going on so it doesn't seem like it needs to be organic I guess to be fair I don't really know but um, it's cool that they're moving that way I don't know
know if I've mentioned this, but uh, my friend has made me a logo. And he won't let me um, see it until I hit 100 subscribers. So, if you wouldn't mind um, subscribing so I can see this logo because I'm very impatient and I would really love to see it. So yeah, it would help out a lot if you would subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm just coming up to some deer right now. I think you could probably hear them in the back. It almost sounds like cows, but um, they call it the ro roar here. Um, it's basically like mating season. And in the evenings and in the morning, all you hear is this and it gets louder. And the first time I heard it was at night. And it's just a very creepy noise if you don't know what it is. Um, especially because it echoes through the land and when you're sleeping at night it sounds like there's just creepy monsters outside I'm scared of the dark so they don't help but yeah this is my first time seeing them at dusk doing it and they basically fight and and whatnot but these guys have all been dehorned and are velveting because the horns will actually be sold off for medicinal purposes in a lot of Asian countries, so it's quite cool. Um, really cool to see, and it looks like they're actually tracing deer around right now to maybe herd them up. So day one, um, I've already been told that to be a farmer you have to be tough um, because there's just animals dying a lot, and you know uh, we were branding, and the, at the beginning I felt quite sick um, doing it, but. Yeah, they kind of let me know this is this is what it is. This is how you have to be to to get through farming, basically. Um, and the cool thing about this farm is that they don't um, or they let the the deer um, basically die of old age. So you'll dr be driving through the fields and. <laughs> There's a moo cow. <laughs> but anyway, you'll be driving through the fields and you'll just you'll see dead deer just laying on the ground, and um, that's because most of the time they're dying from um, old age. But at the same time, um, they have had a virus come through uh, their deer. Last year they killed off I think 38 of them, and this year they found about four, and they don't know yet if it's from old age or if it's. Um, from this disease. Hopefully it's just the old age. It's hard to tell, is what I'm told. So I'm not a massive fan of mass-produced uh, products, um, but I also understand that that is uh, not going to be the case for a lot of different people and also, myself included, can't al always afford um, locally grown things or small produced stuff and um, what I have to say is that this family is doing an amazing job. They are raising two kids um, and teaching them I think pretty pretty solid standards of, of uh, how they should be treating animals and whatnot and just teaching them the whole behind scenes of what's going on because I think that's a lost in a lot of uh, a lot of people these days is you don't really see where everything is coming from and um, I'm constantly reminded visually but also these guys have been reminding me that it's not easy to be a farmer you, you have to be strong and strong-minded because um, you see all kinds of things every day um, and these guys have had a lot of loss um, but then on the other hand you have to look at the fact that they are still treating all of these animals with phenomenal care even though it's you know it's not always going the right way um, so it's been just awesome to see that um, there's different stories to just what's on the media that some of these 
places are still really taking great care of their animals. So I'm really, really happy to at least see a little bit of what these guys are doing because, well, I'm just very impressed with them. I guess, what am I doing here? And, and why? I don't know. Um, this is a woofing experience, so what that means is I exchange work and help um, for food and accommodation, which is very cool because you kind of agree upon um, how many hours you're going to be doing and also how long you're going to be staying for and whatnot. So, as a traveler, I get to experience these things without committing to a long period of time of working. Loading up the truck with hay to be able to go feed. I think we're feeding deer today. Um, hi, sweetie. Um, so we're just loading up the truck and then Melissa's going to be throwing hay off while I drive a manual, left-handed. Not something I'm used to. Um, through a paddock, which is also quite lumpy, so <laughs> hopefully nothing goes wrong. <laughs> and on top of that, I get to kind of experience what it's like to be a farmer, in this case, um, in New Zealand. And not all wolfing experiences are farm-esque. Um, I just chose that because this, this family seemed really, really cool. And in Milford, where I was before, national parks, you can't have animals, so I was craving that. So here I am, getting to put uh, halters on baby horses for the first time, and petting all kinds of things. Hi, <laughs> sweetie. Oh, you smell very much like poop. <laughs> and seeing things that I've only seen on film, so I'm really stoked to be here. <laughs> Thanks for watching team. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing next week, but um, I'll see you then, I guess. <laughs> Until then, I'm going to just finish mucking this out. Yeah.